combination. Black hot, I'm too far, they know I'm blazing. Pop up, she pipe up, her man hates. I got bad ones around and we do no favors. I got her on the phone, say I'll see you later. I'm kinda busy, I'll be riding around town chasing paper. Pull up H1 and we got no waste, man. We get the place shaker. I see you break it down, let me see you break it down. I see you break it down, break it down, break it down. I see you break it down, let me see you break it down. I see you break it down, break it down, break it down. This one has come all the way from uh, DJ Sabby, and it does feature Gigi Lamain as well as M uh, Money uh, Worldwide. And then this one is a tag that tell. Uh, and uh, talking about the man, uh, DJ Sabby, actually is a guy we'll be talking to all the way from uh, South Africa, Metro uh, FM. Uh, he is actually the, the presenter at Metro FM. Been in the game for quite quite some time, and I'm honored to actually have uh, him uh, join us on uh, today as our spotlight. Uh, DJ Sabby, good evening. Hello. Hello. Hey, TJ. How's it, brother? Hey, I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Doing good, man. How are you? I'm amazing, bro. I'm amazing. How are you doing? How's everybody? Greetings, greetings, zombie. <laughs> thank you, thank you, man. And the whole part of every, everybody is like, whoa, in South Africa. Yo, man, everything is cool. You know, just a part of South Africa being affected with the... Yeah, yeah. Sides of late, but uh, besides that, we we try today's fr freedom day. Oh, oh, which is oh, a public oh. holiday, yeah. Today's a public holiday this side, so nobody got it, nobody went to work today, <laughs> including yourself. Yourself, yeah. You know, the, the great thing about being a freelancer and doing what we do is that you you work when you have to work, yeah. Well, but well, for that first time, I know a listener and a viewer, um. You know, who is DJ Sabi? Introduce yourself to Zambia. I always like this question because it's an opportunity to be vague, you know? Yeah. So, DJ Sabi is a summit of Jali. That's my real name. Uh, DJ Sabi is my stage name. Um, you know, it means the best in ever, uh, the best to ever do it. I'm a media practitioner by trade. Um, my primary job being radio, but I also do TV, I do voiceover work. I do consulting, uh, I, do a, I do pretty much, you know, a lot, yeah. um, but I'm a media practitioner first more than anything else, I'm a communicator, I also make music, um, sometimes I forget what I do. <laughs> pretty much a person who connects people from different places around the world and just bring them together through this platform that we call radio, but uh, that's who I am, I just turned 32. Eight away before 40 sounds a little bit crazy how did we get to 32 so fast but yeah man that's that's me there's so much i can say that's why sometimes when i have to answer this question i feel like there's something that i should be saying it's like a, a 30 second lift um proposal yeah well um first of all congratulations on another metro fm gig metro fm gig thank you thank you bro uh it's been this is my 13th month you know um since joining metro so it's my first year yeah. um, now i have the number one show on the station um, that's awesome it's been it's been amazing it's 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 natural progression you know having been on a regional station here in south africa and moving to a platform that talks to the entire country so yeah super excited still still getting used to it well um how long have you been in entertainment uh, industry for uh, industry for how long have I been doing this thing? I started doing this thing at the age of 14 at uh, a community level. When it comes to radio, that's when I was introduced to radio. Uh, moved up to Johannesburg, which is like the, the Lusaka of South Africa. Mm. City uh, where dreams come alive. The city of gold as it's known to further my studies when it comes to radio. So I did radio production at the Misa. Graduated, was an intern, got my break at KFM out in Cape Town. Uh, moved up to Johannesburg to join uh, High Fell Stereo, which is now known as 947. Uh, did a short stint there, then joined YFM in South Africa, which is like uh, the biggest, you know, regional youth radio platform in this country. 
Um, did some work with BBC Sounds, with Edu. Um, now I do some stuff with DJ Ace, out on One Extra. Do some stuff with Nada Simone on Power 105. Um, but yeah, I'm also on Metro FM, doing the biggest chart show in the country, which is a Metro FM Top 30. So I would say commercially I've been doing it for 13 years, um, but I started at the age of 14. Wow, what a, what, what a long journey. Now, for someone that would want to know, um, you know, how uh, the South African you know, radio and entertainment industry is, how, how would you say, how is it doing right now, looking after, you know, post-COVID, and just how is the industry surviving right about now? Right about now. I think when it comes to traditional media platforms, like, you know, your, your TV platforms and radio, we're doing very, very well. Even when you look at the numbers, uh, the recent stats that came out, they still go to show that people still rely on radio when it comes to information, music, and just keeping them up to date with what's happening across the world. So also when it comes to finding solutions, you know, radio still serves that purpose to, you know, to connect the people to everything happening around them. Um, TV is still doing fairly well. You know, there's, there's a, a big market now that's opening also with pay TV uh, because pay TV, you know, the platforms like DSTV are opening up more uh, channels for people to access information at a lower cost. Uh, so we're seeing um, a big growth, you know, um, in that space also. Um, Wi-Fi is being fairly, you know, available in several spaces in the cities and metropolitan areas, which means um, online content is also growing. People are consuming it a lot. So um, there's been there's been a, a great shift when it comes to online versus traditional, but traditional media in a South African context, it's it's still fairly weird. Oh, great. Now, uh, we had the situation um, not long ago, actually. I um, think it also happened in South Africa back in the day where there was, uh, you know, artists complaining at the music not being played um, on uh, the local radios as well as, you know, in the clubs. And I do remember back in the day, things about was it 2000, when um, they actually managed to get uh, more local music playing on radio stations and uh, more TV. Now, that, that, that same thing recently did actually happen in Zambia where we saw um, artists coming up and say, well, why... Is there more on the piano being played in clubs as well as on radios? You know, um, why are we not playing that music as you know, as, as you know, as, as radio DJs? What, um, what, what, what would you say looking at something like that? How did South Africa manage to get you know that eighty percent, seventy to eighty percent of local music being played, and why is you know music like I'm a piano doing very well? You know, in the in the country. You know, so in South Africa, especially when it comes to a national broadcast, um, there was this rule that was put into place um, that they have to play 90% of South African music, which I think is fairly great because we should be celebrating more of our local talent. But there were certain, I guess there were certain pillars that were, were proving this to be very difficult. But um, at the time when this decision was being put into place, I was on a private radio station, and private radio stations, they literally can do as they please, as long as they serve their mandate to uh, ICASA, which is the governing body that gives the licenses to these radio stations. So there's also that that comes into play, where radio stations have to fulfill that requirement that comes with their licenses that have been given by ICASA. So it really proved to be difficult, especially for the commercial radio stations. You know, the ACBC has um, three, but I can be corrected when it comes to commercial radio stations, it's Metro. Five um, and Radio 2000. Those stations serve as a commercial uh, properties for the national broadcaster. So for them, it really um, proved to be very difficult because they had to also service the mandate that comes with a license. Um, I was an outsider at that point in time and reading, you know, several articles that came out. I think that's what um, proved to be very difficult. But the station I was at, you know, YFM at the time, you know, we already like playing a whole lot of South African music. But when it comes to radio stations servicing the South African market, I think the more you listen to radio stations in this country, especially the national broadcaster and also some private um, you know, radio stations, they're really embracing the South African sound. And also what has happened, instead of playing more international tunes, the, the African sounds have taken a big quota into that. So instead of playing a, a Chris Brown radio stations, will put a David or, or they'll put a Wizkid. And that is kind of like the diversified the ear uh, or, or the palette of music that we're offering to the listeners. So there's been, there's been a great shift as to the music that we're offering as, as radio programmers to the listeners. So instead of putting that international sound, you put an African tune, it will still service the quarter for you know, the, the African rotation. 
and also you you're giving you know a taste of what else is happening across the continent and you're playing south african music and you're sneaking a little bit of those pop charting tunes coming through from different parts of the world because the listeners still want to hear what's happening outside of africa so there's been a change there's been a change but the next question would be there's more to africa than just nigeria and that's what people like me are trying to fix. Wow. And uh, when you say you want to fix it, how, what exactly are you, do, are you planning to, like, how, what route are you looking at taking you know, in terms of you fixing that whole, you know, aspect of that? We should all listen to Nigerian music. And a lot of, wherever you go, Nigerian music is dominating. Talking about Nigerian music, just today I was reading an article about having um, Banner Boy being, um, doing a uh, show just at uh, Medicine's uh, Square Garden. And he said he's one of the highest paid African artists right now. And I believe him. And I believe so, so ten, I'll say eight, ten years ago, I made a decision to start playing sounds outside of South Africa. You know, I put my head on the, uh, on the block and a lot of South African artists came for me. You know, they're like, yo, Savvy, uh, why are you giving primetime airtime to artists outside of South Africa when we already, st uh, you know, struggling? One thing about South Africa is that people are very patriotic this side. Um, but the easiest route to take at that point in time was obviously going to the sounds that people are already exposed to. Now, one thing you can't take away from the Nigerian sound is that he had found means and ways to infiltrate the South African markets through different spaces. You know, you go to different hair salons in South Africa, you're most likely going to hear Nigerian music. You go to downtown, you go to, you know, various spaces, you're most likely going to be exposed to Nigerian music. So that was the easiest point of, you know, of entry. Uh, you, you turn on Channel O at that point in time, they're most likely playing a whole lot of Nigerian music. You know, maybe Ghanaian music will also come second, you know, at that point in time. So I had to use those two countries to start showcasing the other sounds that come through from Africa. And the more I consumed, you know, streaming different radio stations across the country, I started bringing in more sounds coming through from various parts of the globe, uh, of the continent. And people started, you know, gravitating towards this music and that started changing the sound of various radio stations because I started being the sampler of music that people can play on the urban format radio stations. So that was my responsibility as a radio DJ working in a, a you know, on a platform that is in the forefront of forever pushing boundaries of music. In the beginning, it wasn't easy. A lot of people hated me for that decision. But I started showcasing a whole lot of, you know, of sounds outside of Africa. I can simply say when it comes to Zambian music, I was responsible for making guys like Zone Fam Big in South Africa. You know, the likes of J-Rocks, uh, Roberto, with, uh, you know, with Amarula, you know. And that was me just tapping into sounds outside of South Africa and Nigeria and exposing the South African listener to, to the continent, you know, um, the Sakodes. Um, you know, of Ghana. Those are some of the songs that I made big. When Sakode dropped, there's a song that he dropped way back in the day, man. Um, shot the video out in Dubai. Um, and the great thing about that song is that it wasn't even in English. He was rapping in Twi. And that song did wonders, man, this side of the world. Um, you know, it built, it built an audience for him. And also the people that come through from different parts of the continent that reside in South Africa, they felt a little bit of home whenever they listened to the show. And that helped me also prove to the station that there is something here that I'm doing. Fast forward to where we are right now. Different radio stations are playing different sounds on different parts of the continent because I had to force the music compilers on different radio stations, force the DJs in the clubs to start listening to different sounds coming through from the continent. Um, there's different DJs that will listen to the show. I play a certain song, they'll send me a message saying, yo, Savvy, please hook me up with that song. And for me, that's, that's like my mandate as a DJ to consistently expose the listener to songs that are out there that they might not be aware of so it's been a heavy task but i think i think i've done very well well fair enough i was actually about to ask you say you know which uh, zambian artist you know but you've actually gone ahead and answered the likes of you know um j rocks the likes of um you know, zone fam i remember back in the day i think i was in south as, as well and um zone fam did very very well um the song that that uh Kuntolo. That uh, they did very very well, and uh, I know I I heard it a lot on radios. Even when Amarula came out, it was playing a lot on YFM at that time. Now I would like to find out what makes the South African industry so rich. What makes the South African industry so rich? I I think 
it's the structures that exist in the South African space that allow the South African artists to monetize their music through those structures. And that could be through the collecting bodies like the Samras of this world, uh, you know, the big institutions like RISA, which is a governing body of the recording industry of South Africa. You know, there's Capasso, which, you know, also plays a big role in collecting money online. Uh, there's Sampra. There's all these institutions that are there to ensure that the artist gets their they, they money when it comes to, you know, the music, the money, gen the, the spins generated by their music on different platforms. And that's one thing that I think South Africa has, you know, that certain uh, countries just struggle to have. You know, I've read several, you know, articles from artists out in Kenya consistently saying that they're not getting money. I've interviewed so many artists from Nigeria and they've told me, yo, bro, if we had the structures that South African artists have, we would be super rich because they're making more of their money through shows and also from endorsements. And South Africans know that, okay, cool, at least I'll get that check from Sambro twice a year. Um, at least I'll get that check here and there from, you know, the different governing bodies. You know, that's if you take care of the paperwork and you do register your music, you are able to, you know, I won't say live off your music, but you're able to make some, some form of money from your music if you do, you know, uh, do the right paperwork. And I think that's just what's missing in different parts of the continent, man, the structures that exist. And you're seeing big music company players that are literally going into the continent and creating those structures. You know, at some point, I saw Universal. Um, I remember chatting to, to some of the bosses at Universal. I was like, you guys are on a signature collecting spree across this continent because at that point, you were just signing everyone across the continent. And what that was doing is that it was helping different artists that do not have these bodies that help them get their money to get their money from all these different radio stations that are consistently playing their music and playing their music videos, streaming their music. Um, there's different labels that are now also doing the very same thing, which is a very great thing for the continent because the more we take care of our artists, we take care of the business that comes with the music, then the artists will live off, uh, off their music. Instead of just releasing a song, you, see, you tell us that you've got a million streams, but there's nothing to show for it when it comes to money generated from the music. Or you, you, you generate money, but the label does not tell you how much you, you, you've actually acquired from, from your music. So I think, I think that's, that's the point where we're at right now. I think we're in a better place than we were a few years ago. But with any advancement, um, there always comes a loophole where the artist always finds themselves um, not really benefiting from all of this. But I think what South Africa has more than any other part, uh, than any other country in the continent, Well, that's a uh, well said. And uh, something actually, I was actually having a chat with someone about. And, um, you know, with us here in Zambia, we do have some cops. And um, honestly, a few artists actually, uh, you know, have registered the music because they don't see the benefit of registering the music. So at the end of the day, you find that uh, that body itself actually has now become dormant because people are not going there. You know, people rather put the music now on YouTube or Spotify because they do get something if they have good streams. And um, I like what you say that the body. And the structure that you have in South Africa, what um, help in the industry, you know, strive. And we're seeing guys come out and release two songs. Next thing he's doing, well, he has a car, he has a house. But you find like some artists back here, it will take, take a while for them to reach at, you know, that, 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 um, that level. And um, I guess those are things that we need to look at as the entertainment industry back here in Zambia. Now, looking at uh, the corporates, how involved are the corporates in, uh, you know, in, the, in, the, in the South African uh, in the music industry? That one becomes very tricky because I think, I think corporates play a big role because, for example, I can say as a DJ, if I get a corporate booking, the fee that I'll put forward for a corporate is totally different to the fee that I'll put forward to a club. You know, corporates tend to pay a little bit more, you know, to, you know, to compensate the artists for the services that we're going to render um than what we would make from the clubs and sometimes the clubs really don't pay the most especially as a dj uh, but if you're a performing artist you might make more than the dj unless the dj has a big profile then the club is willing to um you know compensate you properly um but i think corporates really does come come forward you know also with the advancement of online digital uh with all these influencer campaigns the communities that we've built online we are able to affiliate to different brands you know uh, charge them a certain rate to, you know, align their work to our work so we can promote their stuff uh, and also promote our brands at the very same time. So 
all these collaborations are assisting the artists to monetize their name and also monetize the communities that they've built. So I'd say the, co- the, the, the corporate structure really does play a big role. Um, and they really also do come forward. They also have their own shows. Uh, they book the artists. They book the DJs. Um, so that collaboration really does assist uh, South African artists to you know, be able to cover... Uh, some of the costs, they, they daily costs, you know, to take care of their families and all that kind of stuff and also pay their teams. So I say co- uh, com- corporate support or commercial support, very, very instrumental. And, uh, and I'd say some, some companies really do play a big role in taking care of, uh, of artists in general. And I can say in a South African context, um, I know a lot of artists, for example, that have like deals with, with certain, you know, brands and institutions, you know, they'll play uh, at, at events, parties, year end functions, all that kind of stuff. And all those commitments go unwinded. Well, Sabi, man, uh, thanks so much for being part you know, I mean, of uh, the Sunset Shakedown and being our spotlight this evening. But before I let you go, what words you have for the people in Zambia? When are we seeing Sabi in Zambia? Come on. Like, listen, I've been trying to come down to Zambia, I don't know for how long. It's probably been four years now. Uh, I've spoken to Roberto about this. I've spoken to... Pretty much, uh, even Cleo Ice Queen at some point, I was like, yo, girl, when you make music, shout out to Cleo, I see she's back doing her thing. Um, you know what I mean? Um, even Zone Fam, when they were out in a prime, you know, I was like, yo, boys, let the boy pull up. Let's do something. You know what I mean? Shout out to J-Rocks is doing some amazing stuff. There's a lot of artists, man, I've, that I've spoken to. I was like, yo, let me pull up in Zambia. Let's do something. But I think in God's time, you know, it will definitely happen. But um, there are people like myself, I just want to tell the Zambian people, there are people like myself who are trying our best to, to bridge the gap, you know, um, and bring artists together and expose the songs and the sounds that are coming through from different parts of the continent. Uh, I'm doing the very same thing, taking now, now I feel like my responsibility is bigger, where now I'm playing sounds coming through from the continent, exposing them uh, to the UK market, to what I'm doing right now with Ace on One Extra. Um, and this is all by the affiliations and the relationships of both with artists and managers in different parts of the continent to ensure that we raise the African flag higher. So to all the Zambian people, one day I'm going to pull up and trust me when I pull up, it's going to be a party. It's going to be a crazy situation. Hopefully you're going to be there, TJ. If you're doing something, bro, TJ, call the boy out, bro. Let's do something. Well, De- I'll, I'll Devin, Devin make sure that I, I call you out. But we'll make a plan as always. We'll see what we can do. And uh, it'd be nice to have you, you know, um, come uh, and uh, be, uh, be part of an event here in, uh, uh, here in Zambia. In Zambia. Zambia. It would be absolutely amazing, my G. Absolutely be absolutely amazing. amazing. Be absolutely amazing. Well, before I let you go, one more thing. Uh, lead us into your song, Polo, as we let you go. And um, yeah, we get to play that one as you say bye bye. Oh, thank you very much, man. Shout out one time, teacher. Appreciate the platform. Shout out to Sun FM. It's great being here. This is a leading single taken from my album that I dropped last year uh, in the last quarter of the year. I had 20 artists that nobody knew about, um, had a talent search on, you know, on Instagram, cut it down to 20 artists, made songs, put them on the map. Uh, and this was a leading single celebrating the polo, which is a very iconic car here in South Africa. You get a job, you, get, you buy a polo. You get a job, uh, you buy a polo. If you pull up in a polo, you might get a young thing. So this is a song featuring Kazan's Finest. His name is Kedu. Um, and the video is out. You can check it out on YouTube. The song is called Polo. Follow me on the socials at DJ underscore Sabi on Instagram, Sabi the DJ on Twitter, DJ Sabi on Facebook, www.djsabi.com. That's my home online. Also, you'll find my booking details right there. Boom. Thank you, Sabi, and have an awesome one. And um, take care, bro. CJ, take care of yourself, G. That was a DJ Sabi all the way from um, South Africa, and he is one of the leading DJs. He's actually with the Metro um, FM in South Africa. He does a top 30 uh, countdown, and yeah, one of the biggest shows in South Africa on a radio right now. And uh, we get to listen to his brand new track. This is uh, Polo. And we say one more time, I thank you to DJ Sabi for taking time to be our spotlight this evening.